Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to our next week of prep for first grade. Um, this is week 20 for, prep, for our prep class. We're going to get started with a prayer. And for this prayer, um, it's about the Holy Spirit. And I don't have the words on the screen, um, but I'm going to pray and I'm going to have you listen to the words of the prayer as I pray it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So in our lesson today, we are going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. And if you remember, I'm going to have you turn to a page in your book here. If you remember, the Holy Spirit is part of the Holy Trinity. So if you get your Spirit of Truth workbook and turn to page 200 in your workbook, page 200 you are going to see this picture here. This is um, an image of a stained glass window of the Holy Trinity circles. So just take a minute and just look at this picture. See what you notice about the picture. Then think back to what we learned about the Holy Trinity. Remember, the Holy Trinity is the mystery that there are three persons in one God. Do you remember who the three persons in one God are? We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So take a look at these three pictures in these three circles. Which one do you think represents God the Father? Which one do you think represents God the Son? Which one do you think represents God the Holy Spirit? So this one here in the top left is God the Father. And if you notice, there's a hand in that picture. And if you remember, we talked about the fact that God the Father created everything. He created everything with his hand. The circle on the bottom here, that is God the Son. If you remember, God the Son became man in the person of Jesus Christ. And then the last picture in the top right, this is God the Holy Spirit. And God the Holy Spirit is often depicted as a dove um, based on the story of Jesus' baptism when the Holy Spirit des descended upon him like a dove. So a lot of times when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we see the Holy Spirit depicted as a dove. All right, so today we are going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go through our lesson today. All right, so some things to think about before we talk about the Holy Spirit. Let's think about some things. What would school be like 
without a teacher. So imagine you come to school one day, whether it's you sign in virtually or you are in person and you go into school and the other kids are there in your class, but there's no teacher. What do you think would happen? What do you think it would be like? You might be thinking, well, the students might get confused. Students might be kind of wondering, where's the teacher? Um, and who's going to be in charge? What are we going to do today? How are we going to learn? How are we going to know what we have to do? Here's another question to think about. What would sports be like without a coach? So imagine you are on a sports team. Maybe you are on a sports team and you have a coach. Well, what if you didn't have a coach? It was just a bunch of kids together and they say, okay, we're a team now, but there's no coach. What would happen? Everyone would probably be looking around and thinking, well, what, what should we do? What plays should we make? Who should go on the field first? How are we gonna switch it up? Um, when, when someone needs a break, what are we gonna do? So all of those things kind of lead us to think about leaders. Right? A teacher would be the leader in the classroom. A coach would be a leader on the field. So leaders are important. You need leaders when there's a group, right? Because you have to have someone who's in charge, someone who knows what the plan is and, and, and leads everyone forward. So similarly, Jesus knew that when he ascended into heaven, that the people here on earth wouldn't continue to need leadership. Jesus could be a leader when he was here on earth. But when he ascended into heaven, he knew that the people on earth were going to need um, leadership and guidance when he was no longer here on earth with us. So he promised to send a helper um, to lead us and to guide us, um, to help us to be holy and to help us continue his mission here on earth. So we're gonna listen to some scripture passages about this. And I want you to think about these questions as I read these short little passages. Whom did Jesus promise to send to us? And what are some of the things Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do when he came? All right, so the first one, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of Truth. The advocate, the Holy Spirit that the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. When he comes, the Spirit of Truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus promised to send us the Holy Spirit. And there are a lot of things that he said the Holy Spirit would do when he came. He said that the Holy Spirit would be with us always. The Holy Spirit would teach us, would remind us of everything that Jesus taught us, would help guide us to truth and would glorify Jesus. So Jesus promised to send us the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us and to teach us and help us um, so that, that we can be good followers of Jesus. So 
now we are going to fill out a workbook page on page 201, 201. If you notice, there are three circles here. It says Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So what you're going to do is you can draw the symbols for the persons of the Holy Trinity in each of the circles. You can use the symbols that we saw in the uh, picture on page 200. And then um, write one thing you have learned about each person of the Holy Trinity. Something you've learned about God the Father, something you've learned about God the Son, and something you've learned about the Holy Spirit. So go ahead and pause the video so that you can fill this out. Take as long as you need to. There are no right or wrong answers here. Whatever you learned, you can, you can write here. There's not going to be uh, one correct answer. Everyone may have different answers, and that's okay. Um, so go ahead and, and pause the video to work on this, and then we'll come back um, and go to the next activity in just a minute. All right, I'm going to go to the next page. So if you're still working on this page, make sure you pause so you can finish and then click play when you're ready to move on. Oops. All right, there we go. I just kind of moved us along there from that video. So um, hopefully it worked on your end um, as I played it through the presentation there. So um, again, that was just kind of listening to a song about the Holy Spirit. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to read a little bit about the Holy Spirit. So if you can turn to pages 202 and 203 in your book, I'm going to read and you can follow along in your book. You can follow along on the screen. It might be a little difficult to read on the screen. Um, so it might be easier for you to follow along in your book. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity. He is fully God. The Holy Spirit makes us holy. He shows us that Jesus Christ is Lord. He speaks to us in our hearts. He helps us to believe in all that Jesus taught us. He also helps us to live holy lives and to tell others about Jesus. The Holy Spirit first moves in us at our baptism. He helps us to obey God and live as his friends. In the sacrament of confirmation, we are given the gifts of the Holy Spirit. These gifts help us to become more like Jesus. The Holy Spirit helps us live holy lives. He helps the church to be holy, and he can help you to be holy too. So now there are three questions to answer based on what we just read. Who is the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit show us about Jesus? What kind of life does the Holy Spirit help us to live? So take a minute to answer these questions in your book and then we'll go over the answers together. So pause the video so that you have time to write down your answers and then click play when you're ready to go over the answers together. All right, I'm going to go to the next page. So if you are still working on this, or I'm going to go to go over the answers. Um, so if you're still working on this, make sure you hit pause until you finish. All right, so for the first question, who is the Holy Spirit? That could be found right in that first sentence. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. What does the Holy Spirit show us about Jesus? Shows us that Jesus Christ is Lord. And what kind of life does the Holy Spirit help us to live? Holy lives. The Holy Spirit helps us to live holy lives. So if you need to write any of that down, you can pause to do that. And I'm going to go on to the next slide. All right, so on this page, we are looking at page 204. It 
says the Holy Spirit works in your life. The Holy Spirit moves in your heart. He reveals to you that Jesus Christ is Lord. You can pray every day to the Holy Spirit. Ask him to guide you. So in this box on page 204, you are going to write a prayer to the Holy Spirit. Or if you don't want to write a prayer, you could also draw a picture um, asking him to guide all of the choices that you make every day. So you can, again, you can write a little prayer to the Holy Spirit or you could draw a picture. And what you're doing is you're asking the Holy Spirit to guide you in the choices and the decisions that you make. So this one, again, is going to be um, one that doesn't have a right or a wrong answer and one that everyone will have something a little bit different and that's okay. So there's, there's nothing to go over at the end of this. So pause the video and when you finish, click play again because I'm gonna go on to the next page. Okay, so I'm gonna go on to the next page now. If you're still working, make sure you pause and then click play when you're finished. All right, so for this page, pages 205 and 206, we are going to look at symbols of the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, so we're going to read the scripture passages um, on page 206. And then we're going to figure out which symbol is shown in each of the pictures on page 205. So we first need to look at page 206, okay? Let's take a look at the symbols here. The first one, I will pour out water upon the thirsty ground, streams upon the dry land. I will pour out my spirit upon your offspring. So for this one, one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit is water. See if you can find on page 205 which one is showing water. What do you think? All right, we'll go over all the answers at the end, but if you want to fill them in as we go, you can. So the second one, B, the heavens were opened for him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Notice the bold word there, dove. So another symbol of the Holy Spirit is a dove. C. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind. Notice the bold word there, wind. Wind is another symbol of the Holy Spirit. D, as sacred anointing oil, this shall belong to me throughout your generations. So oil, anointing oil, is another symbol of the Holy Spirit. The next one, E, the Lord then came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. So here we see the Holy Spirit being represented by a cloud. And the last one, when he looked, although the bush was on fire, it was not being consumed. So fire is another symbol of the Holy Spirit. So if you look at each of these options, each word that is the symbol is, is in bold. So we have water, dove, wind, oil, cloud, and fire. And all different symbols for the Holy Spirit that we see in the Bible and scripture. 
So see if you can match them up on page 205. Which symbol is which? And you can write that on the line. You can pause to write them in and then click play when you're ready to go over the answers. All right, so number one is the dove. Number two is fire. Number three is wind. Number four is cloud. Number five is oil. And number six is water. All right, so if you need to pause and fill any of those in, you can do that now. And then click play when you're ready to go on. And then I just have some summary points of what we learned today. First, we learned that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. And we learned that Jesus promised to send us the Holy Spirit to teach us and to guide us. And the sacred authors of the scripture used many symbols for the Holy Spirit to help us understand him better. All right, that is it for prep today, guys. You did a fantastic job. Thanks for sticking with us today. Um, if you need to rewind and go back to anything, you can. Um, and I will see you again next week for our next prep lesson. Bye, everyone.